and welcome to another episode of Fuba. Today we are going to talk about a very important concept when working with serverless and the cloud in general that we tend to forget, and that's the use of CDNs and the edge of the cloud, um, basically Amazon CloudFront. <laughs> so in today's video, I want to give you a brief introduction of what is CloudFront, uh, what problems it solves, how it works, some of its features. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about the most important concepts that you need to uh, know to get started with CloudFront and in the next week video we are going to see an example and how you can define it with CDK and do everything that we are going to talk about today. So let's get started. I mentioned a CDN. What is a CDN? Content Delivery Network. Well, CloudWatch is a CDN and basically a CDN is a group of distributed servers that work together to provide fast delivery of things in the internet. And those things can be HTML pages, videos, images, and other kind of files. A CDN basically is a very big global cache where things are stored there and they're very close to the users. So then the latency from the response back from the, the, the request is shorter. So what problems does a CDN uh, solve and particularly CloudFront? Imagine that you have this application there, um, I don't know, deployed in the new region of Spain in Zaragoza <laughs> that is coming up soon. Um, and then you have requests coming from cities nearby, like, I don't know, something in Portugal, something in the north of France, or I don't know, Netherlands, and something in the south of the UK. That's okay. The requests are close enough to Europe is very small and things are okay. But what happens when you have something coming from the south of the Middle East? Or when we have something coming from <laughs> South America, then it becomes slower and slower. And in here, it doesn't matter how well you have de designed your application, how fast it responds. It's just a matter of physics. Basically, from the moment that the client makes the request, until it reaches the server from the time the server responds and it reaches the client, there is time. And that time, it's very hard to optimize because it's the laws of physics, how long the data takes to transfer all around the world. If you're on optic fiber, it might be the light speed, but still, it's a time. <laughs> so that's what we have things in between that collects all these files, so then there is less uh, latency. So we will put this edge uh, compute. So we will put these uh, caches in different parts of the world. In this case, you can see one in the north of Brazil and something there in the Middle East. And then when the request comes uh, from, I don't know, Brazil or Uruguay, then it goes to the edge of the cloud and it will check if it has the files that it requested. If it does, then it will get the files directly from there. If not, then it will do the whole long process, but it will be way better for the user and experience. In AWS, these cache are called edge locations and there are around 400 around the world. So we have those in there. So then let's go one more step into the detail and see what happens. So a user requests content from an application. Basically, it requests an HTML file or an image or a video or something like that. Then the DNS routes that request to the CloudFront point of presence, POC, and it finds the best edge location to solve that. So basically, uh, it gets, um, it checks if the the content is available in that edge location. So if the object is available in this cache, then it will basically returns it and everything is good. If the object is not available in the cache, then CloudFront will uh, fetch it from the web server, store it in the edge, and then return it back to the client. How long the content lives on the edge, that's a matter of you to configure and decide. Depends on the type of content and how frequent you are updating the content, you might want to change this value. For example, 
If you have images for your product catalog or videos, if you're like streaming videos or something like that, maybe the time to leave is very long because after you upload the videos, the videos can live there. Uh, other times you might have things that are, are changing more often, like the HTML page or like data that is displayed in the page. And you might want to have that uh, data to live shorter time in the edge. So now we talk about AWS and how uh, the edge is configured, we know we have the origin. And in the origin is where like your region, where is your uh, things deployed, for example, uh, Ireland or West Virginia or whatever you decided to be. Then we will have regional, uh, cache, uh, regional edge cache. We have around 13 in the world and these are like uh, bigger, pieces of infrastructure that are globally deployed and basically they are, locate, uh, they are positioned between the origin and the edge locations. And this helps to, because it has a bigger capacity of storage. So for example, uh, if there are some files that maybe your edge location cannot keep anymore because the cache is full, the cache in the regional is bigger. So then the edge location can go and check it in the regionals. And if the regional has it, it's done it doesn't need to go to the origin itself so in that way uh, it will make the whole uh, origin less loaded with with work so let's talk now about how you can get started with cloudfront basically the thing you need to do is to create a distribution and that's the name that we are giving to this kind of um cache in the cloud you will need to tell cloudfront some things in order to create a distribution the first thing is the content origin this is important uh, it can be an s3 bucket where all these files are or it can be some kind of things with elemental that is one of the services that work with video it can be uh, load balancing, it can be your own HTTP server. You need to find uh, what are the content to be distributed. Then you need to find the access. This distribution can be available for everybody or it can be restricted. So that's something you need to define. And also when we talk about restrictions, you can do also location restrictions. So only a uh, user from these countries can access the data and users from this country cannot. Then you can assign uh, that this distribution is using HTTPS that comes out of the box. It's very easy to set up. You can define the cache key if you need so. You can uh, define different origin uh, request settings like HTTP headers, cookie, query strings that you are going to send to the origin. So you can do quite interesting things in there. And finally, you need to find what kind of logs you are going to be generating when you're working with CloudFront you will get logs by default, but you can also get real time logs based on the request. And those are going to be sent to Kinesis. So if you are using those real time, you need to build that other pipeline. So the content that you usually put in this type of uh, distributions is uh, static or dynamic content like HTTP pages, CSS, JavaScripts, image files, and things like that. Then video on demand, like you can do live streaming and things like that using uh, CDN. And also uh, you can have a concert, a meeting and other kind of real time things. So it's like either static video, live video, static content, dynamic content, you can decide. And this is where you need to start tweaking the time to live because the content is changing all the time. When you're using uh, CloudFront, you might be wondering how expensive it is, and that's a great question. CloudFront is like most of these managed services, you pay as you go, and it has a very big generous free tier to get started, that it's uh, always free, so that means that it doesn't expire after your 12 months. You get one terabyte of data out, and then 10 million of HTTP requests, HTTPS requests, and 2 million of CloudFront function invocations. And you might be wondering what are CloudFront function invocations? Well, you tell me if you want to know more in the comments, there is Lambda at the Edge and CloudFront functions that are available as computing in the Edge and you can run those in the Edge locations. And that's something very, very interesting. So I will not cover it in this video because this is just an introduction. But if you want to learn more, let me know in the comments and I can do another video about that. But that's the video for me today. I hope you find this useful. I think we need to talk more about CloudFront. There is quite a lot of things that can be done 
with this service and in the next week video i will show you how you can uh, create distribution how you can set a bucket as an origin and how you can start using that from your website right away and very simple so stay tuned subscribe and like this video and i see you next week with another episode of Uba. Ciao ciao!